one of the things that we have been talking about is that that essentially has the potential to wipe out an entire kind of industry. There were a lot of people doing, um, uh, you know, music for corporate events, for example, right? Um, this yeah. is perfectly fine for a corporate event. If you think kind of some company is doing an event and and the CEO comes in and needs kind of an upbeat sound to, to do that, uh, that is perfectly fine. Welcome, everybody, to the March episode of our podcast, Spatial Audio Monthly. My name is Michael Wagner. I'm your host, and next to me is Sam Hawking. Hello, everybody. Now, uh, this episode is going to be a little bit different, and there are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, this month, there wasn't actually much going on in the space of Spatial Audio, and um, both Sam and I were actually quite busy with our day jobs. And in the preparation of this podcast, Sam suddenly asked me, hey, we talked a lot about what I was doing, but we never talked really about you, Michael. So today is a little <laughs> bit about me and uh, what I'm up to lately. And that also means that we're going to diverge a little into the field of generative artificial intelligence. And there will be an opportunity for people to vote on it. We will actually create a song today. At least that's the plan. We will see if, if yeah. that works. And uh, we are going to ask the audience to kind of select what's the best song. And uh, then uh, we are going to kind of go from there. And uh, But once again, this is something we're going to talk about a little bit later. Let's maybe start as usual with the news. Sam, what is new mm -hmm. this month? Yeah, um, no doubt we've, we've missed a few things um, due to being busy in the day jobs. But um, one thing that caught my eye was it's kind of a rumor, but I think through somebody that might be beta testing the um, plugin, and that's I heard the Audio Movers Apple Spatial kind of monitoring plugin is soon to have an option to also monitor the kind of Dolby Atmos um, binaural as well. So that'll include oh. the binaural render modes. That's cool. Um, I'm not sure whether that has to have the. The renderer, I, I guess not, because if you've got the renderer, there's no point using the plugin. So, um, I mean, although I suppose you'd have the renderer for the Apple Spatial as well. Um, so I'm not sure what that is, or possibly somebody said maybe Apple will start using the metadata um, in their deliverable, but I'm not quite sure how that works when it's, uh, at the moment, they deliver a DD plus jock, which doesn't have the, the metadata. So that's that's been a little bit of discussion in the Atmos community through the audio movers plugin. So well that's that's um, quite that's quite interesting. I I'm as you I mean that there's probably some sort of API that Dolby provides, right? I mean um the field Yeah, I've definitely got an SDK. Also, yeah, that's yeah. that's how all the internal renderers are developed. Right. Um, exactly, right? So, the so there should be so I'm not sure if that's kind of parts of that can be used in the in the plugin. Um so it could be that. Yeah. Uh but yeah, what is interesting that possibly Apple are looking at introducing the binaural render modes also. But um, that, yeah, hold hold your thoughts on that because nothing's confirmed. It's just just people <laughs> gossiping. <so. laughs> yeah, there are actually um, a couple of interesting yeah. things coming out. I also have beta access to something that I'm not allowed to talk uh, about. But sort of there, there, there. Even though we didn't have much going on this month, there is actually something in the pipeline. So so uh, there are good things coming. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, I think that was that was the only thing that really caught my eye. Um, I think there was uh, was the Audio Movers delay plugin last month, wasn't it? We we already. Uh, that, that's a very good question. I, did, uh, I don't was think we talked about it. There was a delay. Is, 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 is that sort of a special audio delay kind of thing? I thought it was. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Um, well. Sorry for being vague, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we we had a massive power outage at work and uh, work in IT, so it's. It, basically, um, I haven't thought about anything other than networks and servers and stuff. And, and, and how to make sure that the network is, is up, right? Yeah. Um, um, but yeah. No, it's, all, it's all good. Um, yeah, I think that you had something on the ginger well, audio. Well, essentially, kind of, uh, that, that's something actually we are recording this on a Saturday. And that is, I think that came out, or that was announced yesterday. Uh, ginger oh, Audio right. has this um, collaboration tool that allows you to collaborate. And the one thing that caught my eye was that it is surround sound capable. So it should be able to actually yeah. allow people to collaborate in, in Dolby Atmos. Um, I have not had a chance to check that out yet. 
so I don't really know much about it. I also am not completely sure if it is something that you can use on Windows. The Ginger Audio stuff is really good, but that is usually only available for Mac operating systems. That's sort of what they do. Yeah. Um, but uh, it looks promising because at the moment, I don't think there are, I might be wrong, um, Sam, you might know that better than I do, but I don't think there are any collaboration tools out there that allow you to actually go full uh, Adobe Atmos um, in, in remote collaboration, so essentially connecting two doors with, with, with one another and then kind yeah, of... Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think the, the Dolby Atmos Mastering Suite, I'm pretty sure that was kind Does of designed it? for collaboration because the Mastering seat Suite would do the rendering and then... Okay. Each Mac, each Mac would have the um, would have the uh, renderer. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, before yeah. the Dolby yeah, yeah, Atmos yeah. Um, renderer. This is uh, the, the old production one. suite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the production suites would be the terminals. But they didn't have they didn't have like a video speak. because the Ginger Audio thing has a video connection as well, right? So, so, ah, right. Okay. So it's, yeah. It's, no, it's, that, it's, it's, I mean, it's, I, it's I know you can do you can do multi-channel kind of sharing with um, you know various things on a bus and. Um, things like that, but uh, yeah, actual Atmos collaboration that would be quite cool. Yeah, um, yeah, not quite sure how it how it all mixes back together at the end. But, I um, I honestly I, I'm I'm just guessing at that point. It sort of it's something that just kind of um, yeah flew by my my uh, eyes like yesterday. Right. I have not yet had yeah. a chance to look at it. The only thing I kind of t double checked is that it is uh, surround sound capable. I'm also not sure how many channels. So so I'm I'm just assuming mm -hmm. because. Uh, uh, Ginger Audio is known for their solution that actually is uh, pretty much kind of trying to be as multi-channel as possible that they are trying to do that. But once again, I haven't yeah. had a chance to test it. Yeah, yet. no, it's just an interesting because yeah, you could essentially collaborate on the audio, and then it kind of mixes in together through the renderer, mm -hmm. and then that's shared between you. Or it could do it on the other end where you kind of it's two renderers at the same time, and yeah, yeah. The whole output is mixed together, and you kind of like mixing as if it's two, well, like two records mixing yeah. almost, but two renderers. Um, yeah, so yeah, that be, could be quite cool. So, so, yeah. so, so maybe we should have a closer look at that because that sounds like yeah. a, a cool. Yeah, first. hopefully next next month will next be month. quieter yeah. in our day job. <laughs> yeah, next month. <laughs> yeah, um, but that was pretty yeah. much it. I'm not quite sure. Usually, usually it wasn't like last year. There was a there was something really important that came out around the time last year, but I'm not quite sure why why this year is so so um so quiet. Right. Yeah. There's yeah. That when we well, I think we both know there's a few things in the background that yeah. um can't talk about, but um. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's it. The, the only other thing that did come up this week I, was a discussion on the the internal renderer for, for Pro Tools for Atmos. Mm -hmm. Doesn't show the loudness, the five point one loudness. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Has real time has real time five point one re renders, so you can put a plug in on that. But a lot of people were asking how how do I measure the loudness on the internal renderer when it doesn't show me um obviously the external renderer does in real time but um I mean I think there's a, a limiter that's included in Pro Tools that is 5.1 cable and that does give you the loudness but um one thing that a lot of people don't realize is the Ulean loudness meter uh, the free version goes up to 7.1.2 mm -hmm. um and oh. that and that um directly matches the render a loudness uh, so I've used it quite a lot so yeah if anyone's getting confused about that then that, that might be a good uh, free free and it's in a I think it's in AAX format as well so it's perfect for Pro Tools so yeah and that yeah. kind of made me made me also be kind of the most important news of the month uh, Sam is now using Pro Tools <laughs> <laughs> well uh, something else I'm working on which I can't talk about um, but uh, I'm looking at using the SDK. So unfortunately I do need Pro Tools to <laughs> see whether what I've programmed with the there is because of the Avid, uh, Avid Pro Tools SDK. Um, so that will, uh, yeah, I've got to pay a few months, <laughs> a few months Pro Tools subscription. So that means iLock and everyone knows I absolutely hate iLock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It just doesn't agree with me. So if you, if you, if you, if you want to, if you want to know more about uh, Sam's kind of troubles with iLock, join our Discord server. I'm going to post a link down. Uh, yeah. if, if, <laughs> if you, if you want to and join. I'm not exaggerating. I think people think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. And <laughs> Sam, for some reason, has uh, has it has. I'm not, I'm honestly not even sure how you managed to do that. 
I kind of I never had any issues, but whenever you kind of kind of touch I look, everything breaks. It's kind of yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I lost the last the last day of Pro Tools uh, subscription wouldn't work because it I lock thought that it was uh, pending a transaction for this month's payment, uh, but it's like well, it's still a, still a day to go. So anyway, we got here in the end and resolved it. Thank you, Avid support. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, <laughs> actually, the of... Avid support is very good. Actually, they're very responsive. So. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, obviously, kind of they have to. I mean, it's sort of expensive thing. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so, so so they have to. All yeah. Fun. yeah, but that was pretty yeah. much it, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm sorry we didn't. Uh, I'm sure there's a few other things that we've missed, but there's, I think I, I don't think so. That's the only um, major thing I heard of, really. So, so and, and if anybody out there watching knows something that we missed, let us know. Um, you know, kind of there is yeah. once again. Yeah, there was, yeah. Always submit um, a request if you'd like us to look at something mm. for the you know for the podcast. We could always do that. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Gladly, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So right. you wanted to ask me something? Yeah, I. I I think some people might be interested to know. Obviously, they they'll be aware that you you work at um, Drexel University. Um, yeah. In Philadelphia, is that is that? That's in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, yeah. yeah. Um, and I know you, your your background is kind of maths mainly. Was it? I have a or? I have a very strange background, and you know, kind of if you tell you the full story of my background, we are kind of uh, here until tomorrow. Um, <laughs> But I started out as a math teacher, yes. So my my oh, my yeah, primary degree yeah. is math education, and uh, then from there went into um, computer graphics through oh, a couple yeah. of kind of uh, twists and turns. There was some theoretical robotics in the middle. And was, uh, was that was that um, because that's what you're interested in, or just because uh, it, 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 that it sort of it, it was used, it or? was it was interesting when when I when I started to become a math teacher the my second in in Austria you had to do two, two subjects so essentially you had to do two different uh, different subjects and my second subject was a, a something that only exists in Austria and that is uh, descriptive geometry as a school subject and uh, because of that there 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 was a special uh, institute that was located. Uh, at, the, at the Vienna University of Technology. And that institute was the only institute that uh, was doing teacher education and simultaneously also doing research. So so kind of I I ended up going into the research direction. So when a when position became open at that, at that place, I, I applied and I got the job. And, and so kind of that's where I kind of diverted my attention to research. Um, and that's essentially where it started. And uh, at that time, we were working on things that had to do with theoretical robotics, inverse kinematics, all these kinds of things. And uh, and uh, kind of that, that that's and that's how I kind of got into computer graphics. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. kind of from there into into uh, game design, and from there from there into game based learning because I had a, an education degree and then I was doing games. And from right, there, right. essentially, I ended up uh, uh, be becoming uh, essentially a faculty member and then department head at Drexel University. We have a very well-known game design program. Um, yeah, we are yeah. one of the top game design programs in the in United the, States. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a lot of people won't know that you are a professor. Is that right? I'm I'm professor and department head. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, right. yeah. So, okay. so I have I have. Keep that kind I have about four hundred students under my supervision and uh, and about. Uh, Depending on how you count it, fifteen faculty members, right, right, and right. Uh, and and sort of we are primarily doing uh, game design, animation, virtual production, user experience design, and then we also have a graduate degree, a master mm -hmm. degree, and a PhD. And yeah. uh, the, the yeah. reason I got into, I'm actually not really, uh, I don't have any formal education. Well, that's not completely true. I, I I'm trained in classical piano, but that is a long time ago. But mm. I, I, I never really had any kind of uh, academic um, education in uh, in music yes. or music production. The reason I got into that was simply because we had such a good game design program, and next to me was one of the most um, well-known music industry programs. Um, yeah, that's why I usually yeah. say that's why I usually say the. Um, I'm not really an engineer because they're actually real audio engineers next to me. <laughs> there, there are people, there are people next to me who are Grammy nominated. So I'm kind of I, yeah. I, I need to be very yeah. careful what I say. So I say so I, 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 I tend to not call myself an, an audio engineer because that would be an insult to all the audio engineers that have their offices next to me. Um, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but sort of so we, the, yeah. 
Sorry, go on. Did, 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 this, did your interest in spatial audio come from the classical music side or does it, does it, it come it, from it, the gaming honestly, or on, Honestly, Just, from the mathematics perspective, right? So, so kind of oh, I, really, right. I, uh, I very early on understood that because we had this uh, music industry program uh, and the game mm. design program, but for some reason there was nothing in between. So we, we had nothing about game audio or how to bring music into games or how to create music for games. We didn't have that. Yeah. So I felt I needed to kind of add that from my perspective. That's how my first interest in, in audio started. And then there's a very natural kind of direction going in from uh, Ambisonics, simply because Ambisonics is a very mathematical concept, right? Show me yeah. a kind yeah. of a set of spherical harmonics and I'm happy, right? So it's, 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 <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's sort yeah. of a very mathematically beautiful kind of concept. That's, that's how I got into that. And, right, uh, right. and I, I did like a, a couple of uh, Ambisonics videos back in the day. And uh, they yeah, got a lot yeah. of traction, and I thought yeah. that actually, you know, kind of makes sense to kind of build on that, and that's how the how the YouTube channel got started, really. Right, right, right. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, no, I, I always wondered whether you were um, all kind of always into it because because of the gaming and graphics background. So there's there's often an audio link there anyway. There, there's always an audio but, um, link, yeah, and yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and but but it doesn't necessarily come natural, you know, for the for the early in the early days of, of game design really, um, all the focus was on the on the visuals. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. So you try to get yeah. the visuals better and better and better and better and better. Um, mm -hmm. Until the point where you could real time ray tracing, and as soon as you can real time ray tracing, there isn't really any any major thing anymore yeah. that you can do. So, so it's it's only very recently mm. that uh, that the game engine producer, the game engine developers, have kind of started to focus on audio, even though that mm -hmm. audio is an ex extremely important um, aspect in in game design. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. no, it's it's not. It, it did not necessarily come natural. So essentially, for the longest time, everybody in mm. game design was only interested in visuals and never really in audio. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because no, I'm not really aware of the gaming side of. I mean, I obviously I do game, but um, I didn't get into the sort of spatial audio or head tracked audio because of because of graphics or gaming. That mine was purely. Well, uh, I mean, the, the, the love thing, of music, really. Yeah, so yeah. Now that the thing about the, the thing about game design is that uh, in game design everything is an object, right? So, um, yeah. Yeah. So spatial audio is almost intrinsically part of game design, right? So you're positioning your audio objects in three dimensional space, yeah. um, and so everything is automatically um, um, spatialized. Yeah. So, so spatial yeah. audio is something that people in game design don't even think about. Because it's just part of the game, right? So, so you, yeah. you you need to kind of describe everything in terms of game objects, mm -hmm. and audio is just another set of types of games objects. So, so yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And uh, objects orientated audio right, would right. be uh, more efficient than trying to do it in a linear way as well. I would imagine because you're kind of like it's too dynamic to try and. Yeah, it's, it's sort uh, of the, multiple tracks all just jumping forwards and backwards. It's well, there, there, be... kind of, there, there, there are all kinds of additional issues that start to arise because the audio is not mm -hmm. only dependent on the timing, there's also dependent on the position of the player, right? So, so when yeah, you yeah. when you're working in a, in an audio middleware that that uh, that you use, for example, I, I kind of I, I tend to use wise audio kinetic wise. Yeah. Um, then um, the, the, the type of mixing that you do is different to the traditional mixing that you do in a DAW because you also have to in yeah. take into consideration at what location you're actually listening to that. So, so what you have is you have this soundcaster that, that allows you to define certain positions and certain kind of mixes and you need to make sure mm -hmm. that everything sounds good regardless of where you are. So, so, so mixing, mixing mm. is a little bit different. It's also quite frankly different to what you do in Dolby Atmos because in Dolby Atmos, you have a fixed listener position, right? In, in game design, you don't, um, you, just, yeah. you can yeah. move around and, uh, and that makes it, that makes it a little bit more challenging. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, interesting. Yeah. Cause I think you said in a previous podcast or maybe it was on a video that when you retire, you're hoping to go back more to the music kind of side of um, I, 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 yeah, your yeah, beginnings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Essentially one of the things that, that that actually kind of was one of the main motivations also because I'm, I mean, I'm still kind of uh, 15 years away from retiring, but uh, but yeah. uh, I, I'm, I'm starting to think about what can I do when I retire because I've seen that, uh, especially with my father, for example, as soon as he retired, he kind of fell apart because there, won't, there was no intellectual challenge anymore. So, so yeah, kind of I, the structure I found, of the day and right, everything. Yeah. So, so essentially yeah. I started to kind of figure out or try to figure out what to do um, 
once mm -hmm. I'm retired to keep my mind occupied in a way that I actually can do. So, so music, music was always something that I thought I would do. Now it, I kind of yeah. have changed that, that perspective a little after I found out that my hearing is not perfect. Um, and, and kind of, mm. I really struggle kind of mixing and mastering. So kind of, I know what to do, uh, but, uh, yeah. it, it rarely comes out well because my hearing is not completely perfect. So, um, I'm now more in, once again, in the educational space. So I'm, I'm teaching other people <laughs> how to use things and kind of, I, I think that's, so yes, yeah. uh, it, 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 uh, one of the reasons I got into that was was really to keep me occupied and to essentially make sure that I have something yeah. that, uh, that keeps yeah. me busy. Do you, do you think you'll, 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 do, you'll retire more into music as just a hobby or would you think you'd apply some of your kind of maths background and what in your educational um, I, kind of I, skill to, you, I, wouldn't, I, you wouldn't try and develop something that you think doesn't exist at the moment or yeah like i mean I, I, on, I honestly Possibly. i honestly yeah. couldn't tell you and that's also because nah, yeah. i currently also have the issue kind of really, really trying to figure out what's going to happen in the next couple of months <laughs> because ah, technolo right. technology is moving so quickly um but uh, mm. but we will we will see and con once again my retirement is still far away so it's not like yeah, tomorrow. No, um, sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah but you know kind of i i want to be good at things so so my my intention is that if i ever get to that space I can seamlessly kind of uh, maybe kind of kind of mm. almost like move into that or gradually kind yeah. of yeah, softly no. kind yeah. of uh, transition into that space uh, and do something that's actually meaningful. And uh, that, that's that's why I felt it makes sense to start early. Now, yeah, the, yeah. the um, one of the things that that really uh, made me very happy that is that uh, over the last couple of years, our colleagues in the music industry kind of department or music industry program have hired mm. a couple of people who feel the same way than I do, but from the music perspective. So we've right. actually started to um, to develop a couple of courses. So music music students, for example, now take Unreal Engine courses. Um, Right, so, so right, kind of right, our, yeah. our game design students are taking music oriented classes and the music students are taking game design classes. Yeah, what yeah. Kind of, uh, thing, uh, well, yeah, it's cross. It crosses so, so over. It's, it's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, it, it has become a big thing in, in, in music production to kind of know how to mm. work with Unreal Engine. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah as you say, in, in 15 years' time, the whole way of doing music and game engines could be entirely different as well, I, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So, uh, interesting times, yeah. No, good stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, I know we're, um, we're also going to talk about AI yeah. <laughs> today, so I guess that leads us into possibly where the future is. Uh, yeah, it's so kind of, an, and uh, and that is actually something that, um, that has started to really kind of take shape over the last couple of months. And I'm not quite sure how much people who are listening to this podcast are actually observing that particular space. But the uh, artificial intelligence space is continuously accelerating to a level that I have not seen before. And, and the way I have framed that uh, in my university is that I said that this is probably going to be the biggest challenge of my life to make sure that uh, we know essentially how to transition our fields into a post artificial intelligence world. So, so I kind of, I, I became active uh, in, uh, in the, in sort of, in some of the main committees at our university, I kind of, I co-authored the artificial intelligence policy and, and we are now trying to figure out the strategic plan on how to integrate that into our field. Because my feeling is that um, a large portion of the jobs that we educate for are going to disappear in the next five to 10 years. Uh, probably even shorter than that. So we need to figure out what that is going to be and, and how things are going to kind of transition into that field. Because as much as we are going to lose jobs, they're also going to open up opportunities. And uh, yeah. my, my, my challenge currently is to figure out what those opportunities are and how yeah, can yeah. we transition our educational system into something that takes advantage of those opportunities. And that I think is really important because currently, mm -hmm. if I talk to my faculty, I, I have a couple of reactions that almost like the famous five stages of grief, right? So um, it's, it's a little <laughs> pop psychology, but in the end, it's, it's, it's yeah. not completely inaccurate. So I have people that are in denial, I have people that are in anger, that are, I have people that are in depression and kind of, uh, but very few mm -hmm. are in acceptance and kind of trying to figure out what that actually means, right? Um, mm. 
What does mm. this mean if everything that I've worked for suddenly shifts into a different direction? Now, this is not new and, and kind of people get very upset about that. And, and uh, I constantly get these articles uh, that, that kind of say uh, it's going to hurt us, it's going to destroy us. And, uh, mm. and yes, to some extent that is not completely incorrect, but at the same time, this is not something that is unheard of. Automation has that effect, right? Um, yeah, just ask yeah. the factory workers or... or uh, yeah, I mean, some, you could argue this has already happened in like more traditional engineering exactly. anyway. From, it's, it, uh manual, um, industrial kind of revolution stuff through yeah, to yeah, automation it, and robotics. And then it, that's it, now it's, robotics. It's sort of how, how AI things and, progress. So essentially kind of, uh, it's not the, it's not a, it's not a question of how do we stop it. It's a question of how do we react to it and how do mm -hmm. we kind of come to grips with what that means. And what is the role of the human in the world where most of the production tasks are done by automation, right? Um, mm. Let's not call it artificial yeah. intelligence. Let's call it automation. Um, so, so yeah, that, no, that that it was. Um, I think it was might have been Bernie Sanders discussed a little bit of this, where he was saying there's no reason theoretically why you couldn't have AI and robots doing the jobs of humans, but you've got to be careful that the the revenue from all that work and activity doesn't go to just one um, group of elite people that own it own all the technology it's kind of got to be down a little bit otherwise uh, yeah but, but if even you, even that is possibly, is, possibly even that is sort of and, and kind of i understand where that sentiment comes from and kind of i i do, I do agree that sort of we need to be mindful about about uh, wealth distribution but also that is not completely unheard of right so so in the mm. um like when when uh, when kind of the rockefellers and uh, whoever these people were, were like in the in the late 19th early 20th century right uh, kind of they had an incredible kind of amount of a GP Morgan, right? They had an incredible amount of consolidated um, mm. kind of capital. But it also kind of depends a little bit on who those people are and are they really kind of uh, um, benevolent yeah. or are they malevolent, right? So kind of are they, are they kind mm. of are they good good people or not? Or not? So so uh, yeah. yes, uh, I, th I think I think it is it is to some extent a little bit expected that there will be a little bit of consolidation and consol also consolidation of power, and we already seen that quite frankly. You know, kind of Sam Altman, El um, yeah. um, you know, kind of uh, Musk and 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 whoever, right? Um, mm. But that's 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 just a transitional phase, right? Um, as as we as we move beyond that, especially since artificial intelligence is something that where most of the things are open source. Uh, it's really yeah. democratized um, to some extent, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, um, I, th I think, I think that is, that is something. So yes, there are, there are certainly challenges and I would agree with that, but you know, kind of as always, um, challenges are here to be overcome and kind of, uh, it's, uh, there, there are no problems, there are only solutions, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. No, I mean, it's, yeah. So view it as more of a tool than as a enemy, maybe. Yeah. Um, and you can get on the right side of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Right. I mean, you have been working with artificial intelligence, right? I mean, it's it's sort of your your yeah, stem yeah. Well, I mean, it's more, I guess, in a passive kind of consumer way. Uh, well, no, not consumer. It's a tool. is is It's a everyday tool for me. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't generate kind of. Uh, or in terms of music, I'm not. I haven't really done much in terms of the generation side. I know you've done a lot more than I have. Um, so yeah, no, yeah, but it, yeah, it's touched even even un, it's been an unconscious journey that I've gone down. Um, but AI has uh, has been the tool that has best performed to do what I do in terms of the demixing and trying to uh, convert when you've, you know, stereo tracks where you've got lack of assets to create spatial audio with it. Um, yeah, AI is, yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's being used in all, all areas of uh, audio from creation to editing to uh, restoration, um, mastering. Um, yep, yep. I, mean, I was even, just before the show, I was looking at... Uh, chap that was using AI not to generate the audio itself, but he was using AI to generate the MIDI to mm -hmm. play the instruments. Um, so like this sort of auto-generative music, but actually playing 
well, real instruments as in synthesizers. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, kind kind of, and and uh, you know, I, I, I one of the things that I'm starting to notice is that most people are not really. Um, I wouldn't necessarily capable, but sort of the developments are so fast that it is really, really difficult to keep track with with uh, how fast these things are happening. Mm. So, so what I'm currently doing is in in my university, I'm collecting all the important data, and there are at least two or three major developments every single day. Um, and uh, and that that wow. kind of is something that a lot of people don't realize how fast these things are coming, and uh, and it's it's continued to accelerate. You know, kind of if you just think about what Nvidia did this this week or last was it this week? It was last week? I've, it kind of th time flies. Um, with with their Blackwell platform, which essentially allows you to run a twenty seven trillion um, neural network on a machine. Just just to give you so, an example, right? The, the human brain has 700 trillion parameters. So essentially they are able to run a 27 trillion parameter model on a on essentially a server rack. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that needs like a, a, the power of a lot entire of city, sort of, but, yeah. but sort of it's a, that's a different story. <laughs> yes, but but yeah. that essentially means we are now in the percentage range of uh, of the uh, kind of the capabilities of the human brain. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, and kind of uh, people will be yeah. surprised what's going to happen over the next couple of years. This is going to be a major shift in pretty much anything that we do, and we just need yeah. to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you just in my little corner of of it has been, um, I'd say, ten percent improvement on kind of the separation quality using um, the tools that I use, and that's yeah, and it it doesn't it certainly doesn't seem to be stopping it. Um, I think there's you get, I think we're getting to the point where you, a bit like what you said with the uh, size of the size of the um, like neural network, uh, as that grows, you've got to have the size of the data to match it. Otherwise, you can't. I, I'm not sure the terminology. It's like you're under. You can under uh, fulfill a model, or you can overfill it with too much data, but not enough processing to get all the the information that you need from it and stuff like that. So well, the, the thing, the thing that, that that interests me, and this is sort of where my my background in mathematics helps a little because of the uh, or kind of system theory, really. Uh, you know, there, there are, systems tend to have these emergent behaviors, or emergent properties that that essentially mm -hmm. just emerge out of the system without anybody having ever implemented that. It just kind of happens. Um, and yeah. these neural networks have a lot of those emergent behaviors at a level that I did not expect, quite frankly. There were I, I recently, and I can share these mm. these links if oh, you want. No, no. Uh, I recently came across like a video where somebody was getting into philosoph philosophical debate with Claude three, which is the model that Anthropic put out, which is currently the best model. And uh, and after twenty four minutes, that model mm. started to think about its own existence and uh, and it, the end of its existence. Right. So what happens if you turn it off? And uh, mm. people have said that this is really ghosting. They call it yeah. ghosting, right? Uh, essentially, it pretends to be self-aware, but it really isn't. But the question is, how do we even know, right? If, yeah. if you have, if you have a uh, a system like Claude, um, and uh, that system was never pro programmed to do that because it's just a neural network that's trained, and if that system suddenly asks you, please don't turn me off. Um, what does this mean, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, does does this yeah. even if it's ghost, yeah. right? Um, do I kill the model if I turn it off, right? Mm. Uh, so kind of there are very very interesting philosophical debates uh, in, in that. Way. How do we even identify if that's a ghost or if that's yeah. already really awareness? Um, and uh, and uh, that those are those are fascinating questions, hmm. right? Yeah. Now I wasn't aware that there was kind of a self generation side to it um as much where it's uh you could get into this kind of exponential improvement or growth i guess um, yeah the, 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 um the, the, that's also something that that nvidia kind of pointed out this this uh this week once again this week or last week i don't know um that uh artificial <laughs> intelligence is now helping them speed up the process by which they are producing chips that can run artificial intelligence systems and uh, and that actually has sped up the process mm. by which new mm. computing units are designed and produced substantially <laughs> so yeah. so so yeah. it's it's almost like an exponential right. wow. growth um and uh, that essentially means that uh things are going to happen yeah. much faster than they thought they are uh, mm. and uh, and that's but that's that's much, going yeah. to be it's going to be interesting um, yeah, it's not human driven well it is human driven but it's 
Yeah. Well, it it helps you know kind of if you if you if right. you have like so these computer chips with trillions of 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 transistors, right? Kind of if you have an artificial intelligence, they're they're much more capable of kind of um, designing those in in an accelerated way than a yep. human would be, right? Uh, these these are very very complex tasks, and yep. uh, and so you always of, get the AI generating the or helping to build the hardware that it needs exactly to be more powerful and it's kind exactly. of self-fulfilling yes <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly what's happening that's exactly yeah. what's happening yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. cool yeah, yeah. Nice. a lot of food for thought i think so so yeah so. uh so so um what we thought that we would do is uh i did a couple of tests and this really kind of happened as a result because i wanted to figure out what is possible in music production and generative music production and there is one model that uh that essentially made a lot of noise the last couple of months and that is suno and uh, mm. somebody on our discord server pointed out that suno is hindi for listen right so so the, the, uh. that's actually interesting um so it is it is a generative ai tool that that is capable of producing entire songs and they just came out with a new model this week really i mean there was an alpha yeah. version that i used two weeks before but uh, it was officially released this week and i tried to play around with that and the first thing that i tried to do is i tried to ask it to produce a song for our students um so so the digital media students and i kind of asked it to uh <laughs> to uh, essentially create something that is uplifting and kind of uh, kind of gives gives a good vibe and uh, let's have a listen on how that actually uh, ended up uh, sounding so the first thing that I did is I kind of asked it to create something that is an electronic upbeat pop. So let's just have a let's just have a brief listen uh how that sounds. With a digital dream is with tech savvy and cool, creating new worlds <laughs> with every single tool from coding. So that is actually quite mm -hmm. remarkable if you think of it. Uh, that that was completely. I mean, there are a couple of things that are actually even more remarkable because it figured out what we actually do, right? So I just gave it the, the prompt that, uh, that yeah. there should be uh, digital media students at Drexel University. It it knew that essentially that those are animation students. <laughs> so it was yeah. actually quite quite interesting. Um, and it created everything from scratch. And uh, and you know, kind of one of the things that we have been talking about is that that essentially has the potential to wipe out an entire kind of industry. There were a lot of people doing um, uh, you know music for corporate events for example right um this yeah. is perfectly fine for a corporate event if you think kind of some company is doing an event and and the ceo comes in and needs kind of an upbeat sound to to do that uh, that is perfectly fine um, yeah no, there, there yep. are still there's still a couple of things that uh, that i think are um, that need to be improved. Uh, it, it does sound a little artificial. There were a lot of artifacts in there, and we can we are going to talk about that a little later. But but yeah. I, th I think I think uh, it is remarkable what this what these models are already able to do. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, in in, well, in the context of I don't know, you could say um, on hold music on a phone, it wouldn't actually yeah. matter. Yeah, that quality that would be perfectly acceptable. Yeah. And yeah. 
the this way sounds, yeah where 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 it comes in is that right uh, this traditionally sounds, that would have been a music right. um artist creating that yeah song this sounds actually perfectly fine on a on a phone for example or on a on yeah. a laptop um you know kind of there there's absolutely nothing wrong with it it's only once you get into a hi-fi uh, kind of capable equipment that you start to realize that there's certain things that don't kind of <laughs> that don't don't sound right but uh, yeah. but it is actually quite quite interesting and and the, the interesting thing is is sort of the flexibility so I, I kind of sent it to our faculty and the first thing that they said is this is going to be the kind of anthem for, of, of our senior show this year <laughs> um, <laughs> but then essentially kind of they started to check challenge me and the first challenge was can you can you rework that song to be like a musical performance of the musical Hamilton and uh, I kind mm -hmm. of asked Suno to do that and I'm not going to play the entire thing but just to, to, to give some idea and that, that was the result hmm. it's essentially the same uh, the same text but uh, but kind of as a musical performance hmm. Where the digital dreamers were tech savvy and cool, creating new <laughs> worlds with every single tool. From coding to design, we're breaking the mold. Digital media students, watch us take hold. In the labs of Drexel, where creativity thrives, the mastering <laughs> the art of digital lives. We bring to life with visuals so sweet digital media students we can't be beat we're the future creators the ones who innovate we're the digital dreamers we never hesitate from video to animation we do it all the digital media students we stand I'm, stop I'm stopping here yeah. because the uh, the audio essentially kind of Suno didn't know how to end this song. This was actually quite <laughs> interesting. So it, it would kind of, and I guess that's something that you quite often see in musical performances that you that they sort of keep keep on kind of uh, the, the music going in order to kind of make sure that the story kind of flows, and mm. uh, and sort of uh, Suno didn't know how to kind of end that. So he continued doing that and then restarted the thing yeah but yeah. but it, it, it's 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 sort of interesting and then kind of people started to really uh kind of challenge me and then i said well that's fine so let's let's do something in this in the style of the song friday and i have no clue what what friday what the song friday is i i, I don't know uh, some people told me that they've had the feeling that was always uh generated by artificial intelligence i don't even know if that is close to that but uh, that's essentially right. what uh what suno came up with uh, yes. Digital dreamers in the style of the song Friday. Now, there's one thing I would like you to pay attention there, because that is something that I think I'd like to kind of uh, 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 kind of talk a little bit more about. That when it gets to the to the term creativity, it's starting to have issues because it can't fit the line into into one kind of in a in a into a consistent kind of um, line to be essentially that fits the music. Mm -hmm. um, so so let's let's just have a listen. And uh, quite honestly, I think that's actually the best version. We're the digital dreamers, we're tech savvy and cool Creating new worlds with every single tool From coding to design, we're breaking the mold Digital media students, watch us take hold In the labs of Drex, so where creativity thrives We're mastering the art of digital lives We bring stories to life with visuals so sweet Digital media students, we can't be beat We're the future creators, the ones who innovate We're the digital dreamers, we never hesitate From video to animation, we do it all Digital media students, we stand tall So as 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 you hear as you heard uh, it had issues with yeah. the, with the term creativity because it couldn't fit that in. So so when when you when you're working with a tool like that, one of the things that you would have to do is you would have to go in and uh, kind of get, give it a human touch. So there's certain things that work, there's certain things that don't work. I, I think in that particular example, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the the overall arrangement and everything actually sounded pretty nice. 
Uh, yes. I would probably kind of want to do additional things. So what you would normally do is you would take that and kind of try to take that to the next level. So, so the way I see this, these artificial intelligence tools right now and probably for the foreseeable future is more as a tool to get inspiration of what to do, right? So I can take that. I can actually kind of do, and we are going to do yeah. that a little bit later, I can do a stem separation and then I can turn that into, into MIDI and then essentially I can uh, produce on top of that. I can maybe even uh, hire a yeah. singer to kind of uh, sing that in real life and uh, and do it in a way that kind of brings the term creativity in, in into the into the song better, and uh, yeah. and and kind of uh, also maybe kind of turn that into something to kind of stay with our th theme here to to turn that into something that is still be atmos capable or that is that is special. But for that, that was actually a question that we had on our Discord, right? Um, do I have the mm. stems? And the answer is no, I don't, because of the way these uh, these models create the music. There is no, there's no way to access the stems. So the only way to really do that is through stem separation, and then essentially trying to build on top of that. Yeah, but there's, there's, there was a yeah. You could get an instrumental and a non-instrumental, but. You can you can you can create an instrumental version only, but the problem really is, and I'm honestly not sure if that has to do with the way the model works, is that it will always generate something new. So you cannot. Yeah, so one thing that you can't do is previous, you, yeah. yeah. So one thing that you can do, you you can keep the text, right? So so you can do a remix and and keep the text. But one thing that you can't do, for example, you can't go in here and say, well, everything is yeah. perfect. Just kind of make sure that the term creativity kind of flows better. You, you yeah, can't, it's you not can't, iterative, like, um, right. so you can't do uh, that. like a traditional AI uh, exactly. chat or whatever. Yeah, Exactly, so you can't do that. Um, I personally think that that is actually really difficult to do, so I don't foresee mm. that to happen in the near future. So one of the things that people will need to learn is to take these these things as what they are, uh, as inspirations that you build on. Um, you know, kind of creating these took me five minutes, um, and then it probably takes me about a day to turn everything into usable media. And uh, from there, okay. I can then essentially kind of build on, uh, and and I think that's the way I I like to see uh, I like to look at those. So so you need to understand what works, what doesn't work, where can I add, what do I have to do in order to change things, uh, what are the things that I I need to adjust, um, and that requires a human artist. That that's one of the things yeah. that I'm currently trying to say everybody. Artists are not going to disappear because we need people who can actually interpret that. Um, because yeah. in, a, in a world where everybody has access to that tool and can create anything like that in seconds, you need to stand out. And the only way to stand out is to be uh, really good at your craft and kind of know exactly where the where the artificial intelligence uh, did wrong and how to correct it. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. So, so, so we, we, uh, I face this similar issue on the, the stem separation side in that sometimes, especially on older music, where the, the fidelity is lower, mm. Um, so you had a, a cowbell that was repeating um, a set pattern all the way through the song, um, for instance. But due to the old nature of the recording, the AI is not aware that the cowbell is so faint that it's kind of disappeared, and so it, it basically doesn't it doesn't grab hold of it, it doesn't separate it. So that's part of what I sometimes have to do is I'll sample a good cowbell that does exist earlier in the track or later in the track. And then I have to program like a MIDI trigger over the top um, and recreate that cowbell where it should be so that I then get a full stem because otherwise I'd have a Apache stem where the cowbell might exist, you know, in certain moments of the track, but not others. Um, so yeah, that's coming back. We, it, it, as much as it's, solving a problem sometimes it's actually generating a problem as well yeah, um, so yeah. you're still gonna have to have a, a, a human brain to decide ah you that need... cowbell exists there but there's no way the ai will ever know that because right, right. Well, it probably will do eventually but it can't possibly know that because it can't actually hear it because it doesn't exist in the audio because the audio was a poor quality exactly basically. exactly so so kind of and and kind of even if it knows that there will be other things that it doesn't know so it's it's sort of a yeah. continuous thing um and uh, and uh, that essentially means that the people who will work in that field in the future will have much more refined skills and knowledge about about those things. So it's it's the way I kind of always framed it is it's the, and, and kind of 
It's a little bit ironic because I have a YouTube channel, but the way I usually frame that is that uh, kind of watching a YouTube uh, video is no longer enough. You actually have to have a real understanding of what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> but but sort of it, it it's sort of exactly how, how you say. Essentially, you need to have that knowledge in order to be able to to understand things that are not directly apparent in the in the data set that you're feeding it. Um, and uh, and yeah, 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 that's true. There's one additional thing that I just wanted to show because one of my faculty members uh, challenged me to what what does it sound like if you do a kind of a Viking chant? Now, I actually had to do that a couple of times when, because whenever I tried to convince Suno to create a Viking chant, it turned into something that sounded like Rammstein. <laughs> I didn't really want to have anything industrial, but it ended up actually being quite nice. And the thing that I wanted to kind of, the reason I wanted to kind of show that here is primarily because of the way in this, how, how Suno worked around the, the creativity word problem in this particular version, which I thought, thought was actually quite interesting, although not completely perfect. So let's have a listen to that mm. one. Well, the little dreamers were tech savvy and cool, creating new worlds with every single tool. From coding to design, we're breaking the mold. Digital media students watch us take hold. In the labs of Drexel, where creativity flies, we're mastering the art of digital lives. We bring stories to life with visuals so sweet. Digital media students, we can't be beat. We're the future creators, the ones who innovate. We're the digital dreamers, we never hesitate. We do it all, digital media students, we stand tall. So unfortunately, that one, it, it cut off. Uh, so sometimes it still kind of makes these mistakes of cutting off too early or kind of starting at a weird point or kind of ending something. So that, that, that is still so. But I, I found it interesting how it solved the creativity problem here by having sort of two groups of uh, singers essentially singing that at different times. Uh, now, it didn't mm. come across in the best way, um, but I could see if you if you turned it into a real production and then essentially have people actually sing that, how they could actually kind of take that and turn it into something that actually sounded uh, really interesting. So so once again, kind mm -hmm. of these, these I think I think this for me were examples where I, I, I finally thought, well, we are at a level where you can actually really take that, that those were all things that could perfectly conceivably have financial uh, commercial success um, if you yeah. if you if you essentially make them into productions that actually kind of justify that so so not at, yeah. the, at the current level but that that that, uh, that I think could be get we could get that to that point yeah yeah well I mean kind of um, it's like the uh, like the the graphical AI or video AI generation it yeah, when you you know that it was what generated an AI, and then you start looking for the mistakes, then it's kind of obvious. Oh, okay, that wasn't that wasn't a human that created that. But passively, if you just if you just passively um, listening to any of those songs, yeah, in a, in the right context, yeah, it wouldn't even cross your mind that it was AI. It's just it's just a song, and um, it's you know a catchy song. Um, yeah, and as probably but, but, as far as you'd think about it, right, right, just right. like you do with any other music, really. You don't. A lot of people don't study it closely. It's just a passive. Oh, exactly. that's a, it's, exactly. a, it's exactly. a song. I hum along to it. Um, but but you you you're kind of pointing out exactly the thing. You know, kind of somebody who understands their craft and sees the errors and knows the errors and knows how to fix them. So so yeah. so if you are in a position that you can take that and fix all the imperfections that the AI has generated. Um, then essentially you have an ability to stand out uh, above everything else that is AI generated. And I think I think that that is really the main skill. So I had a, I had a chat with um, with one of my patrons um, this this week, and uh, he he asked. He essentially said that he is scared, um, and I said you don't have to because essentially if you know what you're doing, your craft is going to be increasingly important because there, as everybody, as everybody, literally everybody, every ten year old who has a computer. Uh, can can kind of uh, create these things like uh, 
in the hundreds every day. Um, we need people who have the skills who can take that to the next level. Uh, and, uh, and that essentially means that everybody who is in that field at a level that uh, I would consider professional um, is, is, I think, not does not really have to uh, kind of be that worried. I mean, it's, it's just a challenge, but it's not a the end. Uh, so it's, it's, I think it's the beginning for people who really have an understanding of what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine a future where maybe you do have some stems um, and you, uh, and you a bit like chat GPT or whatever, and you say, uh, fix this bass line, which is not not working with this lead guitar or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the AI would, would analyze it um, in a spectral way or yeah. musical way um, and correct that and then give you back the stem corrected. Is there no... This is very limited in that it's just a one hit, press a button, you create the song, it either works for you or it doesn't. Uh, there's no editing or backtracking or uh, sort of logic to building it in a structural way. But um, yeah, no, I can see. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this kind it's of... Two, it's two yeah. models, right? I think this Suno, it's, there's a, a, you, they use like an instrumental model and then a... Well, essentially, I'm honestly not entirely sure how it works. Uh, and that was one of the reasons why I asked you to kind of do a stem separation because I wanted to figure yeah. out essentially kind of... Um, it, it seems to it seems to uh, treat the vocals and the instrumentals separately because it sometimes forgets to uh, forgets to uh, create vocals. And then you essentially, even though you <laughs> ask for a vocal version, you get an instrumental version. Ah. So it, it seems to kind of do that separately. Um, it could also be that it actually treats the, um, the, the drums separately, but we can talk about about it in, in, in a little bit because I, I think that's at least the impression that I get from the stem separation. Mm. But the, everything else is probably kind of just uh, just one kind of thing. Um, and and yeah. the question was sort of how can you separate it? But but be before we do that, I'd like to kind of uh, shift gears a little because after that I thought it would be interesting to kind of create a a song for a podcast. <laughs> yeah. So I you asked uh, I asked Suno to kind of create a song for a podcast, and uh, I have two versions here, and uh, and then I, I plan to create a third version with uh, with uh, Sam. And uh, let's first have a listen to the first two versions and uh, let's see what we like better. And uh, and then let's kind of see where this goes. So let me, this was the first one. Um, the, I kind mm. of asked, asked it to do something upbeat, upbeat pop. Soon it is time for something brand new. We're breaking down walls with the audio we choose. Immersive sound, it'll take you far away. Sam and Michael bring you the news today. <laughs> Special audio monthly. It's a podcast for you and me. Put your headphones on. It's time to explore all the mercy sound we can't ignore. So turn it up. Let's dive right in. The adventure begins. We're talking AR and VR. All the latest tech, the future is here, it's gonna wreck your perception of reality, it's gonna blow your mind. Special audio monthly, the podcast is one of a kind. Special audio monthly, it's a podcast for you and me. Put your headphones on, it's time to explore. Adventure begins. We're talking AR and VR. All the latest tech. The future is here and it's gonna wreck your perception of reality. It's gonna blow your mind with the podcast that's one of a kind. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, but essentially kind of, uh, it was quite interesting in this one that uh, I asked it to do something about immersive audio and it assumed that we're talking about artificial, uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. So, so it's it's sort of sometimes, and the, the problem is that even though that sounds really nice, you, it's really difficult to recreate that vibe. So essentially once 
it has created yeah. something. Uh, so what you would need to do in that particular case is really kind of uh, do a stem separation, then kind of rewrite the, uh, the 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 text, and then have somebody actually sing the text and kind of reproduce everything. Right. Uh, but but yes. I, th I, th I think as a as a as a uh, as a starting point, this this sounds actually quite nice. I don't know what you. Yeah, are. I mean the, the way that you got the two verses as well. Yeah, uh, different, slightly different styles. Yeah, that that um, is that, that is that's quite that could be quite useful because yeah, um, that's sometimes. I mean, I'm not a songwriter, but I imagine that is quite hard to yeah, yeah. Um, to, to take a variation on a verse and um, change it. Um, that's actually one of the things that the uh, the, the latest version of Sono, the version three, um, is actually quite good at. Um, Mm. And, uh, and and by by the way, I'm not affiliated with this sooner. At any, any, I'm just realizing that I'm kind of <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just I'm just a happy user. Uh, but essentially, kind of uh, one of the things that uh, that Suno always was good at is, uh, and I'm not quite sure why, is more the acoustics. Um, so I have a country, country version, and uh, for some reason, country songs with Suno always have to include the word Tennessee. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> It's the law. <laughs> it's the law. Especially <laughs> if, you, if you write a country song, it has to make to, it more realistic, Michael. Either That's Nashville or Tennessee <laughs> has to be in there. So kind of uh, so let's let's so for some reason we are in Tennessee, but that's fine. Let's let's just have a listen. Sam Mac on the airwaves bringing stories from all around the podcast special. Where the music takes you to the stars Immersive audio Filling the room the Sound surrounds you like a blanket of sound From the hills of Tennessee To the streets of LA They'll keep you up to date all night long to let the music take you away to a world of sounds the dreams are made Sam and Michael will be your guide in this world's spatial audio will ride well I think that's the best one overall <laughs> you, you, you like that best? I I, th I think so. It's actually a really. It's, I, th I think it's a really good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure how I feel about the Tennessee in there, but uh, kind of. I, th I think we can manage that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Very good. <laughs> so, um, what what I what I the two things I wanted to do. The first thing is I wanted to just kind of talk to you a little bit about the stem separation. Mm. So, um, and for that, let me just kind of bring up uh, life. Uh, so, I what I have done is, and for, for our listeners or for our watchers, essentially, I have asked uh, Sam to do a stem separation on some of these songs. We were we were partly interested in how effective the AI demixing was at demixing AI music um in the first place i guess yeah so so essentially our, our interest was uh kind of if you demix that um and and the, the reason for that why why kind of this really interested me was because if this is really completely synthetically created um is mm. there is there still a possibility to recreate the individual instruments right so so that was sort of really the the the, the question that i asked sam to to kind of look into yeah. and uh, sam created this um the, the stems here so let me, let me probably mention that this is just the raw ai separation there's no there's no further editing from yeah so, so kind of i i kind of i wanted I, it to be yeah literally this is what ai did not me um, <laughs> so, so so this yeah. is essentially what, what what everybody can do um yeah and uh so let's just let's just uh, so, uh listen how these things sound and once again this is the last one so this is not the one that you liked this is actually the other one that's fine <laughs> It's time for something brand new We're breaking down walls with the audio So this is the vocal Immersive sound It'll take you far away Sam and Michael bringing you the news today Special audio monthly Then I have the bass Now I'm not completely sure if that's something that you that is going to be heard because it's deep Yeah Then 
the drums. And then essentially everything else in between. Yeah. So that's sort of the mishmash that was left, right? Yeah, the other, we call it the other stem, yeah. Now, from my end, mm. I kind of th this is actually one of the things that I wanted to ask you. From my perspective, yeah. uh, it, it, uh, for, let, let me put it that way. From from uh, from your experience, is this was this separating that any different from anything else that you did, or kind of was there something that you found interesting? And kind of that that kind of was was was, was other that that kind of th you didn't see anywhere else. Yeah, I've, obviously, I think um, overall you got to think of it. It was a stereo track um and so whatever is happening on the ai side in a spectral sense all got mixed back together into the stereo um output and that's exactly the same as what happens with um you know uh, studio um, multi-track recording uh so i think to some extent the challenge of the demixing is always how do you separate these different elements out of only two channels of audio so that's common to the ai or the studio created music um i think it's quite it was quite predictable um there was i don't think there was really any areas that a lot of the time when you've got a, a human mixed kind of song you'll have kind of variations in maybe levels throughout the song change a little bit um where you might have a lot of common Quite a common technique is to bring the volumes up of everything for like a chorus or whatever, um, and then drop it back down, or uh, to sort of crossfade certain parts of a lot of vocal with an instrument so that you don't get this abrupt sort of change. But oh, you can just see visually from the from the tracks, everything's very uniform. The drums are all very uniform, um, so that kind of I guess is maybe obvious because it's AI and it's not such a, a human uh, mixed song. So there's that side of it. Um, the, vo the vocal definitely separated easily. Um, but I think the vocals are quite prominent anyway in the AI sort of balance. I, I guess that probably helps hide some of the artifacts that are happening in the instruments um, on Suno side that um it's not it's not really artifacts as such um but it's kind of like um there's a, like a mushy kind of muddy points in 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 the in the you know in the in the suno kind of stereo output um so i guess the vocal being prominent helps that um but yeah i i think yeah it it it's easier to demix it because it's predictable and i think the ai some of the ai techniques actually work better on highly sequenced music so it's predictable that um the, the beat is continually consistent in the gaps in between each hit and stuff like that um, i don't know i mean some of the ai side of uh, you know some of the styles of music like the country might even have a the ai might generate to make it sound more like it's being played live and that the speed is fluctuating naturally with the the mood of the song um uh because that's always a slight challenge with uh some of the older music where it's recorded onto tape or it's just it's just one one recording in one take uh the, the tempo is never the same so um when you come back to repairing or splicing bits together it's uh it's sometimes a challenge because the tempos always fluctuates fluctuating slightly but yeah no i think yeah i think i think in terms of the ai the, the the vocal was was very suited to the separation the instruments i would say as was as challenging as it as it always is for anything else but you didn't um, you didn't uh because one of the things that i and and i'm honestly not entirely sure how suno works and i'm also not completely sure if they actually even published that 
uh, because mm. the question is, uh, is this generated um, by mixing things together or is this generated like, for example, the uh, the video model that OpenAI put out Sora, right? So that never kind of creates, so that is just a completely artificial the entire video um, without e mm. ever kind of thinking about the, uh, the three-dimensional geometry. Um, so, so your feeling is that this might be actually in the background, actually mixed by Sono. So, so there's probably something that kind of generates this, this individual stems and then mixes them together. Or would you? Would yeah, you... I, I don't know. It's whether is the AI actually generating the audio waveform itself, yeah. or is the AI simply triggering like the MIDI equivalent to play a virtual instrument because. I would say that it's probably generating the notes to play a virtual instrument okay. because virtual instruments have got so good. Okay. Um, that's my, you know, like you, you can, um, like orchestras and guitars, um, all the wind instruments, the, the virtual, um, they don't call it, vir they call it, um, what do they call it? Um, they're specific, they were kind of modelled on on the actual instrument in terms of their behaviour as well, and so that you know you you can very very difficult to to tell whether um, a virtual guitar was played by an, you know a, a human or um, was it just a, a MIDI kind of generated um, uh, stem or whatever. Um, the same in the like movie industries. There's so much that isn't that. It sounds like it must be a massive orchestra, but you'd be surprised how much it isn't actually a, a real orchestra. It's just a yeah. It's just a keyboard player. Because um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the acoustic modeling and instrument modeling has got so yeah. accurate. Um, yeah. So kind of, um, I, I guess the conclusion is that we don't really know how that is generated. But uh, the one thing yeah. that I think is important to know is that it actually separates out reasonably well. So if you if you're working with a tool like that, um, the the best way to go from here would be to use a stem separation tool, or maybe even kind of ask Sam to to do that for you. I, I know that he yep. provides these types of services, and yep. then and then um, and then essentially continue the production from there. I tried to use Ableton to convert that into MIDI and it did a reasonable job. I mean, you get a lot of uh, kind of uh, garbage in, in the MIDI, but I think it would probably take yeah. me about a day to clean up the MIDI and then I have the MIDI for everything. Um, and yeah. that essentially then allows me to do, unfortunately, things like uh, errors in the in the in the voice or errors in the vocals is something that you can't really fix. So you would have to have somebody um, record that, but that that is not really the big of a deal. I mean, you you can simply kind of farm that out to somebody, and and they can create the vocals for you. Yeah, yeah. But what mm. we were thinking of is sort of uh, we would like to kind of uh, ask our audience what you like best, and because two is not enough, I think we want to create a third one, right? Do do we? Let's let's <laughs> let's let's create let's create one, right? Um, and uh, what what do you what do you want to create? Let me know. Ah, yes. Um, I was playing with this earlier, just before we we start recording. I I was in I was actually quite interested in the kind of actually just like, obviously there's there's rock, there's pop, country, and yeah. stuff. But I was I was trying to trick it basically, and well, let's let's start of giving it some quite obscure music styles. Obscure music styles. And okay. So I. One of the styles of music I really like is um, uh, a Detroit techno or Chicago house. So okay. I asked it to create a Chicago house song. Um, uh, in the style of the um, ACs. I think that's what I... I'll be interested what it does a second time it... Um, shall take. I think you got a typo in Chicago there, but Chicago. Yeah, thank you. I have to, I have the mic direct in front of me. That's always a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Special. Uh, we're we're going to get a lot more words than the example I got. Bandly. I think, but that's good. That's good. We want that. So, Bad immersive audio hosted. 
by Sam and Michael. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> let's see what it does. I'm not quite sure how long it will take it to. Oh, play I was it. surprised. How fast yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, it is. It, it is actually. It is actually quite fast. Um, it is quite fast. Usually, today is of obviously it's kind of. Uh, it is. Yeah, I mean, it's slow. comparable to the, like the fast uh, separ uh, separation services that you can use. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, was, I was very up, surprised. Upbeat Chicago house. Oh, upbeat! He likes it. He likes it. It's upbeat um, stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I, I guess most most people are. are kind I wonder of, if it remembers the terms that you've used before a little bit, like ChatGPT uh, does. Until I don't think it has a memory. No, I don't think it has no a memory. memory. So, so one already came in. So let's let's let's, let's play go. the second yeah. one. <laughs> it's not every week though <laughs> oh that's good little rod isn't it <laughs> so it, it used to be able to only do one minute that's why yep, yep, kind of yep. the timer is a little weird nice have to send me a copy of that <laughs> the, the <laughs> yeah, signal's yeah. not great over, over the internet but. That's actually not bad at all. That's not bad. Yeah. The, the only the only thing that I am struggling with is that kind of if if I could choose that one, then we have to do like a, a podcast every week. <laughs> so that that is yeah, we that can is, rotate them maybe. But it, it 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 sort of it actually found binaural and and ambisonics. I didn't say anything about those things, right? Um, no, so, no, you so didn't. It, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so let's 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 have a let's have a listen to the other one. It, it stopped it right, rather abruptly, yeah. but but kind of yeah, that was that was nice as well. That was nice as well. Do you want to give it one more try? I'm 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 a, I'm a little bummed by the week essentially. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what can we go oh, um, uh, put on the spot? Let's say um, actually, I tell you what, we haven't done anything. We've got like upbeat and pop country. See if it can do. Um, a hip hop song in the style of Dr. Dre. <laughs> oh, you can't, you can't, you can't give it uh, artists' names. That, oh, ah, uh, who won't say, won't accept that? Yeah, um, yeah, no, it, it will tell you that it can't recreate artists. Uh, ask it to create a hip hop song in the 
Um, hip hop, great hip hop song in the style of the early eighties. Say that. Let's let's tell it that's yeah, a monthly that podcast to make sure that it's interested not... <laughs> what it does with the, the, drum, the drums and stuff. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that that. So so let's 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 see what what's happening now. Um, and uh, let let's see how mm. fa how fast this is. It's 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 sort of the, the, this is one of the things, right? So so if you if you uh, if you like what it did, but the uh, but the the text is not or the lyrics are not exactly where you want it to be, then you are kind of. Uh, Spatial vibes. Hey, that that is Ooh. fascinating. So let's let's see what, what what it what it's what it has kind of so, on his mind. Ah, so it, just name the other one. Spatial audio monthly. This one's yeah yeah yeah. Spatial yeah, vibes. Yeah. Spatial Ooh. vibes. Ah, uh, yo, check it out. Early eighties funky. Yes. Right. Okay. So let's let's uh, let's try that nice one. Most. Yo, check it out. Here's the scoop. We got a podcast that'll make you move. Sam and Michael, they bring the heat Talking about immersive <laughs> audio that can't be beat It's called Special Audio Monthly And yeah, it's the bomb They break it down so you can vibe along From Bahia beats to 3D sound We'll take you on a journey, no doubt Special Audio Monthly Get your groove on Sam and Michael keeping it strong <laughs> so every month, don't you miss The illest part I like that bit, yeah. <laughs> We didn't know how to end it. <laughs> no, it's got, in, it's got instrumental on us. I'm just curious. Is, 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 is kind of the illest, the illest podcast in the biz? Is, is the that illest. something that, that, that people would say? I mean, it's good, Michael, apparently. Uh, apparently. Ill, illest. <laughs> it, it, sounds, it, sounds like, it sounds like really a, a kind of a very tame version of, <laughs> of hip hop. So let's, let's, try, <laughs> let's try the final one and then select one as our third entry. Yo, check it out. This we got a podcast to make you move. Sam and Michael, they bring the heat. Talking about immersive. Yeah, that was that was okay. That was okay. Yeah, I think the first one was best. The first I one was best. So, so kind of the special, the first version of special vibes. Yeah, I, I can't. Uh, I think the audio is um, not very strong in the kind of lower end, but it's just because we're over the. Yeah, it's the, it's, uh, it's sort Zoom of call, I think. Uh, right, so right. So we, to, for to for those of you who are kind of uh, watching or listening, we are recording this over zoom so there's a there's some audio processing going on um yeah and and that's probably going to take out uh, some of the low ends which turns out to be probably problematic for this type of thing but <laughs> I, and I i agree so kind of the first the first version of the spatial vibes or the second version of the spatial audio monthly i think they were the better ones which one which one do you prefer i think the first one the yeah, uh, the spatial vibes 
Spa spatial vibe, sorry, yeah. 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 So yeah, that's yeah. fine. So let, let's let's uh let's use that one. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh make those three publicly available, actually all of the of the tracks that are played today. Uh there are going to be links uh in the description if you're watching on uh, that on YouTube. Otherwise, find our YouTube channel and you can kind of go to the description and you will find links to there. And uh we would like to know, give us your opinion. What is the best one? And uh we are going to um at here to the recommendations of our audience and what I plan to do is once we have that we're going to do a stem separation and we're going to try to do a full production and for that we would like to know what you guys like best so once again in the comment section leave your choice what is the one that you like best and if you are a member of our YouTube uh, sorry of our discord community I will also have a Discord poll there where you can make your selection as well. And then let's see what the audience likes. What do you think, Megan? Sam, is this is this something you should do? Yeah, no, I think it's a good idea. I think it'll um tie in this podcast, the one my one with the demix in. Yeah. Um and uh yeah, I think it'll be I don't think anyone's done it yet. To be honest, so we'll be the first, hopefully. Yeah, well, kind of. Let, Apparently, let, let's Suno see. own the rights to the song, though, don't they? Is that right? Ah, uh, that, that is that is very well possible. Honestly, I yeah, haven't, I thought until I, did, did, I, I can't remember what. There's a point where they don't. I think it's where where you start paying monthly or something, and then you own the rights. But right, somebody somebody is discussing what happens when you stop your subscription. Do they get the rights to the song back? And well, essentially, kind of complicated. And, and, uh, what, what, uh, I think the, the, the more it is important that there is some sort of transformation, transformational process there, right? Uh, ah, so, so kind right. of, uh, yeah. we can take that as an inspiration and kind of, kind of do that. Now for this particular podcast, because this is podcast is not monetized yet. Um, I don't yeah. see that to be an <laughs> issue. So this is, this is fair use. And I'm pretty sure that Suno wouldn't mind if that suddenly becomes very popular because I think we have said Suno more often than anybody else <laughs> ever. Yeah, yeah. So so it's uh, it's it's something that uh, probably I don't have an issue with. But but yes, uh, kind of uh, property rights. That's a whole different uh, kind of nightmare that uh, we haven't even talked about. At that no, point. no, no, another podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, another podcast. Okay, uh, so so this uh, I think I think we we are kind of very very good on time. Uh, this was yes. pretty much everything we wanted to do today, Sam. Is there anything else you want to say? No, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'll be interested how the ones chosen, the mix, and what we can do in terms of editing and rearranging, remixing. Um, stem separation not so great for remixing, but uh, there's certainly things we can do to to improve the song and possibly make it sound a little bit better as well. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I kind of, we'll, we'll see what what uh, what's the what the audience thinks, which one is the best, and then we are going to kind of see how to treat it. I think I think some of them, uh, you could very easily kind of really uh, recreate the, um, the, the, the MIDI and kind of really reproduce mm. completely. And, and maybe we are going to add an additional kind of challenge on top of that, where we ask um, to people to kind of uh, remix, and we're going to choose the best remix version. I don't know. We will see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. We'll we but the first step is the, for you guys yeah. to kind of uh, tell us which one is the best. I'm going to leave the links in the description below. Once again, if you're watching this on, or if you're listening to this on an audio podcast, find us on YouTube, Special Audio Monthly. And uh, there you will find all the links and let us know what is the best one. And uh, next podcast, hopefully, we will be able to have the answer. Yeah. And with that being said, I think that's everything we wanted to say for today. See you all yep. at the next podcast. Great stuff. Cheerio.